Morning. I swear a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Disco Elysium. So yesterday, the first day of the investigation, which was three episodes, was a productive day. We got a lot done. We figured out the odd soul. We punched a racist. We threatened a racist. We collected bottles. I got a new coat. Things are good, but dream sequence now, and from the looks of things, is literally just leading us to um, the corpse. He did say we'd see him in our dreams, and sure enough, here we are. Now, the corpse didn't actually say that. We were talking to ourselves. But, regardless whom, how, what, or why, it's me. Yeah, 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 I get the parallel. Yeah. It's a disco ball. I get it. Like a halo. It's me. Do you remember the scent of your childhood? I remember nothing. Do you remember your wife's hand on your face? You said, who? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth? I'm going to, I mean, I would assume my character was left and did not leave. That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. One hand on the bottle and the other on your dick. Watching her go. Let it all be dragged away from you. Sounds about right. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? I got Kim. He's a cool guy. I can get it all back. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. Bloated corpse of a drunk, I just noticed. You failed Elysium. What is Elysium? Everything. The pale and the useless. On the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Huh. Burning furious truth. I thousand years of written history. I guess Measurehead was right about that one. You really dropped the ball, Harry. <laughs> 4.6 billion people. And you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. No kidding. But acknowledging that is an important part of this. I've talked to you before. No, Harry. You were just talking to yourself. That's all you ever do. Even in your dreams. And the act is wearing thin. The spots of the disco ball fade around you. Yep, the twilight. You'll be back in those cold snakeskins in no time. Sweating up the bed. Did we wear our shoes to sleep? That's a terrible idea. Stinky boy. Yeah, can we take a bath? There is a bath in the hotel room, and if I could actually have Harry wash himself, that'd be good. I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? Life's a struggle, but you have to try. Even if you're bad at it, you have to try. You're bad at anything until you try, and then eventually you become good at it. Or regain what you used to have. And sure, maybe we're trying and doing a terrible job of it. Yeah, there have been multiple moments in the investigation so far that were fucking laughable. You have to try. Better to try and do poorly than to just give up. I'm trying to solve this case. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet. Grinding in your head. Uh-huh. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad. This dry. This unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of... New type of hangover. I'm going to assume it's probably some kind of withdrawal state from dependency. There's another type? Oh yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes too. So soon already. 
A silent alarm goes off in your head, like clockwork, barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Man, we really are actively fighting ourselves, aren't we? Time to go to work in the shit factory. Here we go again. At least we healed. Yep, that's good. Oh, Harry, you poor man. <laughs> it's not looking good, is it? Upsy daisy. There we go. Another day back at it. Good going, buddy. <laughs> I just had the most beautiful dream. Uplifting, rejuvenating. Really? Because you feel even worse this morning than you did last night. Withdrawal, I'm sure. What the hell is going on with me? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. I don't like that this is electrochemistry telling me this because I know exactly what it's going to try and tell me to do to solve this problem. But no, 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 I feel really good. That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. No fucking way. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. No. No, no, no. I can do it. I'm not gonna go back. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days? Basically, a week. Let's be honest. Two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. I can do it without it. I will do it without it. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. I got by without it before. I can do it again. I'm doing just fine. Can I just the go back to bed? It's still cold from <laughs> the broken window and not too inviting, but it's yours. You've earned it. No time to rest yet. I kind of want to put the blazer back on because I appreciate the esprit de corps from it. I'll do it for now because I noticed that esprit de corps allows us to gain some insight into what um, Kim is thinking at any given moment. And I quite like that, actually. We'll go back to normal for a moment because I like this. Right, nothing else going on in here then. Let's start the day. We're doing great. We need 15 bucks by the end of the day or we won't be able to sleep in here anymore. Which is a downer. <clears throat> it's a huge downer. All right, back downstairs. New day of the investigation. I'm going to keep... Oh, hello. That's open now. Interesting. And K Kim wants to talk. Things have changed. Good morning, Kim. Morning. He gives you a quick nod. Looks like we can get to work at once. The Union mess all turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. I mean ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCA being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here. Are much the same way? Men who drink beer for breakfast? Huh. There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. I'm sure they'll just be thrilled to see us. Why do we need to talk to them again? Everything points to the dock workers' union. The belt used for hanging him, tracks in the mud, the circumstances in Martinez, my preliminary information. Uh-huh. Which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them, and it won't be easy. Yeah, this is gonna be rough. Are these the guys Gart told us about? I completely forgot. Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. Yeah, I had a bad night too. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. There's so many of them, should we call them reinforcements? That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. Uh. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? Uh-huh, cool. Let's roll. One more thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Interesting. Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own terms. There are some things I want to do first. They're in no hurry to leave. 
They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that choice to you. Whatever you decide is fine by me. Good, yeah, thank you, Kim. Okay. So we're still working on Jean Meveu. Uh, White Morning seems important. But I would like to perhaps... We can put one more point into the physical instrument and that'd be our cap. I'm curious. If I was to equip the, um, uh, the tank top again, which raises it... Okay, yeah, it doesn't count towards the cap, so I could level that up. Except changes in clothes. So with this tank top on, that's as strong as we can get. Which will give us the best chance against Measurehead. But there are things I want to do first. So we'll talk to the, the shit lot in a minute. Well, we'll talk to Gart first. Maybe he has something new to say. Hey, Gart, how's it going? Can I help you? Uh, my bilf tonight. Got the 20 real? Not then yet. Why are you wasting my time? <laughs> And yours. I was just, uh, I was just hoping maybe you give me a discount. Okay. Hey, ma'am. Just a moment. The old woman turns back to the cafeteria manager. She's agitated, judging from the way she keeps pulling at the frayed edge of her blanket. All right, Mr. Cafeteria Manager, you better give this woman five star service. You hear me? Five star, nothing less, or I will be furious. Dexter and Sinister will be having a meeting with you in the back. And there's no public phones nearby. The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. The cafeteria manager appears genuinely apologetic. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. Good day, ma'am. Everything all right? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. That's a downer. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead too. She sighs. Wait, what's wrong with the phone line? The manager was vague about it. She frowns. Why would he be vague about phone problems? This is something to look into later. Ask God, maybe. I'm pretty sure it's because they've been sealing the copper wiring from the phone lines, but I suppose we can ask him about it. So why'd you need to use the phone anyway? To let the young woman who's house sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and our friend Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night, but they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. That sounds like it's going to end well. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. She looks down. All right, I'll buy. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. Yeah, it would be more reassuring if he did this often. But you have more important things to worry about. So what is this expedition your husband was on? Just some field work, sweetie. Morel is a highly trained scientist. He and his assistant Gary are studying an extremely rare species of insect. Bugs, you say? Gross. But they should have returned by now. They were just going down the coast across the water lock to set a few traps. He said they'd be back on Monday. What could be keeping them? Do you trust Gary? Oh, sweetie, it's nothing like that. She smiles. Gary's as loyal as they come. I trust him with my husband's life any day. That's suspicious. Are they in a rough neighborhood? There's a nameless old fishing village nearby, but we've never had any trouble there before. There is a lot of crime around here, isn't there? I can't say it's the best part of town, but I wouldn't worry too much about a pair of grown men traveling together. Do it. Find her husband. This will surely lead to a cryptozoological mystery with that extremely rare insect. It's the beginning of the rabbit hole that we must climb down. Some fringe science is exactly what's needed right now. Spice up that vanilla murder investigation. You're right. The hanged man is dull. This is where it's at. Oh, this sounds like police business. I'll help you find your husband. Are you sure we have time to go chasing after bug hunters just now? I did suggest we played cool, but... It's just police work. Yes, but a junior officer could... He takes off his glasses and thinks, then puts them back on without wiping. Fine. Our victim's already been dead more than a week. One more diversion won't change anything. And stuff like this increases the public's confidence in us as policemen. Thank you, officers. Truly, I'll be right here if you come across any sign of morale. So your husband's a scientist? Oh, yes. A zoologist. 
a cryptozoologist to be more precise. What is a cryptozoology? It's a pseudoscience that attempts to legitimize research into mythological beasts and urban legends. The lieutenant sounds unimpressed and almost kind of rude. That's uh, one opinion, yes. And people are entitled to their opinions. She provides a very polite response and takes it generally quite well. She's used to playing off such insults casually, but they still affect her. I bet they do. My apologies, ma'am. I did not mean to undermine your hobby. Ooh, poor choice of words, Kim. It's her husband's career. It's not a hobby, dear. It's a subfield of zoology, one specializing in animal species that are so exceedingly rare that many assume them to be extinct or even fictitious. Come on, Kim. I know you're a pragmatic kind of guy, but, uh, uh, Succeed on this one. Searching for such species called cryptids ah! is difficult and often thankless. And frankly, many scientists are too lazy to do it. Universities these days are rarely interested in supporting real research. We're gonna go hunting for cryptids! She's completely internalized her husband's struggles. They are her own. That's respectable. Tell me more about Morel, looks, character, your relationship. Oh dear, I'm not sure where to begin. This will be a long conversation. How, what does your husband look like? Hmm. Well, his expression is slightly grumpy, but his eyes are always bright and curious, like a small boy's. And his palms are quite coarse from all the field work, but he's quite gentle. Sounds nice. It's always a challenge to describe the person you know best in the world. Well, let's try again. If I were trying to meet him on the street, what would I look for? Oh, well, he's a bit shorter than you, but with a larger frame, and he has longish white hair, usually a bit uncombed. You might say wild, even. I can't remember the last time I combed my hair. The lieutenant pulls out his notebook and begins jotting down the woman's description. Good job, Kim. One other thing. He'll likely have all kinds of field gear on him. Even if he's not out in the reeds, you know, just in case. Respectable, I keep a prior bar on me at all times. How long have you been married? We'll be celebrating our 16th anniversary this autumn. Not the most numerically satisfying anniversary, but I like the less obvious milestones even more somehow. Respectable, how did you meet? By a dating agency, I'm ashamed to say. No shame in it. I was looking to get back into the scene after recovering from my accident. And he just divorced. We hit it off and, well, here we are. She smiles wistfully. She's skipping over some important parts. Perhaps you'll find out more later. I don't think they'll be relevant to trying to find the guy. I think I have all the information I need. Let's move on. I hope I've been useful. Nah, making that hand signal, which is like, nah. Tell me more about this rare insect. Oh, sweetie, it's fascinating. I shouldn't bore you with entomological minutiae. I do find insects interesting, even if they are horrible. The lieutenant gives you a sideways glance. <laughs> Sorry, Kim. I want to hear about the insect. Well, it's a phasmid, technically, but... A phasmid, you say? Do go on. Oh, yeah. Here comes the interesting... Where other phasmids imitate sticks or leaves, this one's a living reed. It disguises itself among the reeds here on the Insul Indian coast. So it's a stick. Hence its name, the Insul Indian Phasmid. Perhaps you'll end up co-discovering the phasmid with us, officers. I could be in a research paper, a history book, as the co-discoverer of the Insul Indian Phasmid. I knew it. <laughs> We're going to be chasing made-up insects with cryptozoologists. Come on, Kim, we could do some time off. It's not made up, officer. I can assure you. Nothing's false until it's been proven otherwise. It's simply elusive, so much so that most establishment zoologists doubt it exists at all. What makes you think it's around here? Well, some teenagers making out in the reeds saw one. They, they didn't know what it was, of course, but there was a brief article in a local newspaper about their encounter with a ghost insect that looks like the reeds. Gary sent us the clipping. So newspaper clipping is all you have? Of course, most phasmid sightings turn out to be false alarms, but their description matched the Insul Indian phasmid perfectly. 
and they didn't even know what they were looking at. Sounds like a sure thing. Enthusiasm has wiped the worry from her face. Her eyes sparkle behind her glasses. I'm very excited about this. I suppose I have something of a personal connection to the Insulindian Phasmid. All scientists have their little hobby horses. So is it dangerous? <laughs> Not at all. Why else would it hide itself so carefully? It is basically a glorified stick insect. Is it valuable? Oh, I doubt it. No one gets into cryptozoology for the money, sweetie. <laughs> yeah, same with YouTube videos. Does it have cool powers? Yes, it can blend in almost perfectly among the reeds. It's how it stayed hidden all these years. Centuries, even. Her face lights up at the thought of it. Okay, so what's so special about this stick bug, then? Oh, dear. I'm afraid I'm not explaining this very well. It is very special. The woman's face flushes with embarrassment. Morel can explain it all much better. I wish you could hear him describe it. Then you'd understand, I'm sure. Maybe I could convince her to tell me about some cool cryptids. Sometimes the most charming thing you can do is be reasonable in your requests. Indeed. Could you tell me about one, just one, more interesting cryptid? The Insulindian Phasmid was great. I suppose you could use a break and I could use a distraction. Yeah, I've only just got up. I could do with a break. One cryptid, like <laughs> you said. One. This can't turn into some kind of cryptid extravaganza. We have things to do. Okay, Kim, just one little cryptid, I promise. He nods and assumes a waiting posture. <laughs> Ooh, tough choice there. Oh, what is the most dangerous cryptid? The gnome of Jeroma. She pauses for effect. The gnome of Jeroma? That doesn't sound too bad. Oh, it is. None of his victims survived. Or even relatives never even found their bodies because the gnome's venom dissolved organic tissue. Damn, so what does it look like? It was reportedly a small creature with webbed fingers and a protruding forehead and a gangly little thing. Quite scary to look at. Some kind of kappa or something? A couple of campers found it when it was already dying. They heard an odd wailing in the woods and followed the sound. They were scared and wrapped it in tarpaulin to suffocate it. Uh-huh. It still took the gnome of Jeroma an entire day to die. Ooh. If the body of the creature was found, why aren't there detailed illustrations of it in science textbooks, confirming the existence of this very little species? The, the lieutenant can't help himself. Alas, the first scientist who got his hands on the creature's corpse put it in a jar of formaldehyde thinking that would detoxify the gnome's venom. Uh-huh. Instead, all the venom leaked out of the creature's teeth and into the surrounding liquid, dissolving the creature itself. A poetic end, perhaps, but a real loss for science. She says, mostly to herself, well, I promised Kim there would only be one, so we need to discuss something else. Of course, dear. That's all for now, ma'am. We do have things to do. We do have things to do. Ah, drunk guy is gone, presumably freaking out because I have his card. I'm imagining I'm going to hear about that relatively soon. But we'll deal with it. Ah, another wonderful morning in Ravatol. I want to quit. Oh, hello. In the morning light, the white on blue police livery on the motor carriage cannot but catch your eye. Wait, why am I even thinking about this? Wasn't I supposed to... Do something important? Something murder related? There's always something important. Doesn't mean you can't take a moment to admire this piece of machinery. That's true, and it's what I was heading towards. Even at a standstill, the unibody Caprice Kanema looks sleek and dynamic. The cabin is tilted frontward to give it a more aggressive, hunched look. Someone has waxed it recently. I don't like your machine, Lieutenant. <laughs> That'd be so mean. That machine really puts the loco back in locomotion. Very cool. Mm -hmm. You want to take a closer look? Lieutenant smiles ever so slightly. What's it pack in there? 130. Ooh. I reckon that's a 7 liter V12 there. That's what, rub chin? 7 liter V12? 7.2. Ah. Supercharged. The lieutenant is trying to suppress a smug smile unsuccessfully. Saying these words brings him immense joy. 
A fine machine. Run your hand over the smooth metal surface. Yes. An extraordinary machine. There's gentleness in the lieutenant's voice as his eyes run over the vehicle's contours. Or contours? I don't know how to say that word. It's nice and all, but why so modest? Put some zing into it. Flare it up. Slam it down. You're right, it needs flame decals. It's a bit girly right now. Fit it with some proper off-road components. You need to slam it, Kim. Make it more imposing. Sorry, I'm not following you. <laughs> Lingo it up. Drop the ride to Hundo Mill. Get the camber to Frosty Frosty Minuses. No, that's porno tuning. It's what? Porno. That's short for pornography. I mean, yeah, but what, what do you mean in this context? The sole purpose of pornography is to stimulate one's visual sense to evoke sexual arousal. The same is true with the modifications you're proposing. That's completely different. We weren't talking about that. That's a negative on the porno. Thank you, though. No. No one in the history of convictions has been more sure of anything. That's fair. All right, let's move. I need to. I need to use the radio. Call the forty-two. Give him a status update. You see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Pick up the radio. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Oh, 41st. I was wrong. <laughs> Alice, this is Firewalker. Reconnect me to the 41st. Right. Please hold. Yeah, you heard that conversation, didn't you? 10 4, come in. Firewalker. Over. I thought I could run the numbers here. I'm not going to tell them I've lost my gun. Uh, wait. Before you say anything stupid, think it through. What's there to think about? You're going to be looking at a straitjacket if you tell everyone <laughs> you lost. Ten four, sir. I'm not hearing your question. Yeah, let's I'm wrap this up. Sir. Yeah, that's it. That. Ten, ten, over and out. I thought I could talk to him about the thing. How may I assist you? Could you run a serial number from a pair of armored boots for me? Sir, officer, what's the number? And the make of the armor, if you know it. E50, 100, 1000, the make and model of the armor is Fairweather, T500, slash VE. Got it. I'll contact the ICP database immediately. Call back tomorrow. Hopefully they'll have dug up something useful by then. I should have called last night. Okay. Was there anything else? I'm done with the radio for now. In the cabin. That's all I needed. I'd like to quickly go wrap up our conversation with, um, Joyce about reality. Be worth having a look to see if those kids are back. I bet they are. Hey, she's up on the roof. Interesting. The kids are back. Jesus Christ. Get a life. Oh, I should equip my bag. Just in case. There might be more bottles. And we need money, desperately. We need just under 15 bucks in order to have a place to stay for the night. There is that bin we can break into. We might be able to do that when Kim's sleeping. I do need money, so maybe I should try when he's about anyway. You're back. Good. What can I help you with? I've got more questions about reality. More lessons in basic reality? My favorite part of the day. Go ahead. Ask me anything. Let's try this. 72% chance to succeed. That's pretty high. It remains a mystery what you mean by this. Something close. This Piss. isn't about you. It's about reality. Well, I'm not going to do that, am I? What times are these? These are unimportant times, Detective. You and I were born after the dust had settled. A thousandth of a second too late. She puts her finger to her lips and points at you. Too late for what? For the big time. Her eyes light up. There's a flash of teeth. What's the big time? The revolution. And what is this revolution I keep hearing about? It's quite easy. Every hundred years or so, our species gets together to decide what's next, who gets shot in the head, and who gets the mineral rights. It's a real... kerfuffle. It sounds like a kerfuffle. Who got shot in the head? Those would be the communists. Generally speaking, 40 million people got shot in the head during the World Revolution. But the communists... They all got shot in the head. That's rough. Oh, and the anarchists too. They shot them well. So well, one forgets they even existed. That's scary. Did they come? Did they shoot back? Did they ever? Before they got shot themselves, they shot two million people. 
truly a kerfuffle. Yeah, it was a kerfuffle, all right. Lieutenant mumbles from behind his notes. Yes, the Insulindian deluge, they call it. I had a deluge too, in my head. Point to your little head. Yes, an acute thymine deficiency can be exacerbated by alcoholism. Exacerbated means made worse. Thank you, Joyce. Anyone else get shot in the head on the opposing side? Oh, lots of people. Even the king got shot in the head. Or thrown beneath a horse. Or drowned. Accounts differ. It was unceremonious. Huh. <laughs> Just as well, he wasn't actually the king. Just the king's nephew. So a nerd. The real king abdicated and lived out a long and productive life as a venture capitalist in Grad. Probably a smart thing to do, yeah. Yes. King Guillaume had a nose for bad PR. He ran before it. What is the expression? Went down? Uh -huh. Anyway, Gil got out alive and his nephew Frisell got shot in his place. Very smart. Him and tens of thousands of his wonderfully fascist kingsmen. It was a wild time. I'm sure. Who got the mineral rights? The liberals got the mineral rights. And by mineral rights, I mean everything. She looks up to the sky, then inland at the crumbling city. And by liberals, you mean... Liberals are usually middle-class people, detective. Or the remaining gentry. The beneficiaries of the pre-revolutionary arrangement. Right. Some were rich enough to stay with the constitution. With monarchy. Big mistake. Others bet on the revolution. They were called the ultras, or ultra-liberals. They fared well. Apparently. So how did they win it all? They didn't win so much as survive. We were the last ones standing when the war ended. Everyone else got shot in the head, remember? Oh, I see. We. She's one of them. Of course. Aha. Uh -huh. Everyone got shot. Who was there to surrender to? To foreign intervention. The coalition. Those people really took the mineral rights. I thought you said the Liberals took everything. The Liberals took everything that wasn't nailed to the ground. The Coalition took the ground. Hmm. The ocean, the laws, and the people. I dare say. Who are they? The Coalition of Nations. Grad, Mesk, Vesper, Messina, Oranje, and Sur la Clay. The armed centre of the world. They landed here and ended the revolution. It was the moralist thing to do. I guess if everyone was getting shot as much as they seemed to. There is bitterness in her voice, tempered with understanding. She is critical, but ultimately understands the cause. Hmm. So it's like, yeah, would have preferred to it to have gone a better way, but understands why it went the way it did. So moralist? The moralists believe in keeping everything exactly the way it is. They believe in mineral rights and not shooting people in the head. Understandable. At least not in the same manner and volume as the others do. They are the long-standing provisional rulers of Revachol now. The coalition government. Okay. The rulers of Revachol. And also, the world. These guys are strong. These guys big strong. Not as strong as Dexter and Sinister, but you know, pretty good. This is their zone of control. They embolden the RCM with crumbs of the same law they took. Technically speaking, you are a moralist. I'm not sure I am moralist, ma'am. Of course. Not easy to be moderate about head shooting in your line of work. Hey, I've only shot three people. And, well, I've only killed three people. I shot that one guy in the pelvis. When was this kerfuffle? The turn of the century revolution. <laughs> Don't answer it. It's a trick question. <laughs> the revolution began in 02 on the Isola of Grad. Though, by the end, nearly the whole world had gotten involved. So who started it? They're the ones I have to punch. It wasn't a who, but a what. A pandemic of Zarat, a particularly virulent prion disease, which the authorities in Grad proved unable to contain. Then Mazov came along and overthrew the government. That Mazov guy, I've heard of him. So what did Tarat Sarath do? It made people overthrow their governments. No way. Indeed. Zarat is a highly infectious microorganism that destroyed brain tissue. The actual causes of the revolution were material. The pandemic only provided the spark. Provided people with less critical thought. So where did it spread from there? From Revachol and Grad? Not far. 
The world managed to cauterize itself. Mazov's government was overthrown in 08, and the coalition crushed the Revachol commune two years later. It was the end. So what came next? Why? You and I, officer. Our lives in the zone of control. She spreads her arms, raincoat flapping in the wind. Something tells you her life and yours are not that similar. Maybe it's because she has a boat and you have that necktie? <laughs> a pair of pants? Yeah, our lives are ever so slightly different from each other's. No doubt. But we share the same time and position on the planet's crust. That counts for more than you think. Fair. So what is the zone of control? A city-state divided into free market zones under the everlasting interregnum of the Coalition of Nations. And you, of course, the Citizens' Militia. Citizens' Militia. The clatter of typewriter keys fills the main hall of the reappropriated silk mill. Precinct 41. Chad Tilbrook presses enter. Outside, Officer Elfboy Williams slams the door of an armored motor carriage. Elf Boy Williams. The zone of control is the third incarnation of Revachol, after the failure of the Suzerain and the Commune. So what happened in the rest of the world? Modernity. They developed the marvels of the inter communication. Telematic milieus, radiation, colored plastics. Meanwhile, in Revachol West, the aftermath continues for the fifth decade. It's been like this for how long exactly? 43 years. Hard to fathom, I know. And what have we even been doing all that time? The 20s saw a decade of urban war, west of the river leveled, offshore platforms in flames. Still, it's regarded as an improvement on what came before. 08 to 19 was simply hell. And after that? The 30s. Things settled down in the 30s. Revachol East transformed itself into the world's largest tax haven, with the international community's blessing. For the first time in a long time, it seemed like things were going somewhere. And were they? No. Uh. It was a market mirage fueled by cocaine and quantitative easing. The 40s dispelled it like a cold splash. An Isla wide hangover, you might say. And here we are. She curtsies. Welcome to reality, baby. It sucks. I don't like it. I don't like reality. I'll put one in a spree de core. That's all I want to put into that. What would you have done differently? Good question. What would you have done differently? Not drink. No, her first. <laughs> no. I would have killed more. 400 million more if that's what it took. I asked you. Who are you in all this? And I asked you, past less detective of the citizens' militia. <laughs> what insight has acute encephalopathy given to you? Maybe a medical solution? It sounds like Zaraf drove these people mad. So a quarter of humanity simply lost their minds. And how would you stop a prion? A complex folding protein. Unlife. With the technology 50 years ago. I mean, looking around, it sounds like some hygiene, modest social care, and a little research program is a bit more than anyone has going on. Good hygiene. Really. A very moderate solution to an extreme problem. It's those sort of half measures that doomed the authorities in Grad. I'm sure, but you're asking for a solution from someone who lost their memory and is a cop and a drunk. I'm not sure what you're expecting. When they failed to step up, Marzorf and his party stepped in. In this particular case, maybe a more robust state response might have been appropriate. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> Opinions expressed here do not reflect the official position of the RCM. I'm sure. And what is your official position, Lieutenant? Indeed. My position, ma'am? My parents got ripped to shreds in the revolution. I would have gone the same way. I was saved by being two years old. That's my position. The abattoir. Huh. Understandable. Indeed. Well, that's enough about the times. They are what they are. Who knows? An afterbloom may yet come. You can only hope. Anyway. Enough sentimentality. Is there anything else you want to know? Not so fast. Who is she in all this? Ask her who she is. She owes you an answer. I'm gonna try this again. Six yes. kilometers southwest in the Valley of Dogs. 
Junior officer Chad Tinbrook takes aim at a rabid black dog licking its wounds in the grass. Interesting. To his left, his partner, Emil Mullins, whispers, You heard what happened to Tequila Sunset in Martinez? Is that me? Yes, he lost his mind, Tilbrook answers, fingers on the trigger. Don't worry, Emil. He pulls it out slowly. Slowly now. He'll find it again. I can only hope. We always do. What am I? You? You're an officer of the RCM. She says energetically. I should point out that the reason why I'm kind of focusing, not tons, but focusing a little bit on Esprit de Corps at the moment is not because of like actual cop knowledge or connecting with other cops. I'm not too worried about that. And it wasn't for this stat check either, but it's because it allows you, or it seems to, allow you to figure out what Kim's thinking at any given time. And I really like the situations where Kim and I basically coordinate because my character understands what he's thinking and where he's coming from in a certain situation. Like when we, um, when we intimidated the uh, lorry driver and it's like, if I didn't have good enough esprit de corps, I might not have even known that Kim was trying to set something up there and I might have thought he was just getting angry. So I really like esprit de corps just for the ability to almost wordlessly communicate with Kim in given circumstances. It's a really fun little, um, dynamic. I kind of want to keep that going, make sure I've got enough to make sure it, the, the checks keep coming up. But yeah, the Revachol Citizens Militia. Preciso Mundo. Good. And what is the Revachol Citizens Militia? Nothing more nor less than the de facto law enforcement body of post-revolutionary Revachol, detective. Uh-huh. Yes, we are the Revachol Citizens Militia. Both of us. He's being sarcastic. <laughs> are we? We are. You said de facto. Yes, that means not de jure. The RCM acts in what is poetically called the twilight of international law, both at the behest of the coalition government and to its chagrin. So what do you mean? The RCM's responsibilities are defined by the Emergency Wayfarer and Aliments Acts, three pieces of legislation keeping the city in a let's be honest, laissez-faire stasis to the benefit of foreign capital. I see. All three are good to know when we are out policing. The lieutenant looks up from his notes. So I'm basically, I mean, it sounds like I'm a thrall to foreign interests. There's nothing basic about your role, detective. It's true that the RCM keeps everything the way our seemingly permanent provisional rulers like it. She leans in. Yet, on the other hand, I know these people. I deal with them daily. Let me tell you, dear, they are not fans of you. They're jealous of my superstardom. Why? The post-revolutionary decade was a disaster for the coalition government. Revachol in the 20s was hell, especially on the west side of the river. Gang warfare, a botched privatization scheme, a nuclear pile meltdown. All these things sound ideal. They called it the international zone because no nation wanted to claim responsibility. The RCM restored peace where the coalition failed. A true blue citizen's initiative. They will never forgive you. She smiles. That's somewhat of an exaggeration. In reality, ours is a mutually beneficial arrangement. Is it though? Revacholians get to keep the peace in Revachol, and the coalition doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> anyway, sorry to intrude. Please continue. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lieutenant. Permit me to conclude with this. Who you are, to me, is the police, the only legitimate law enforcement authority in Revachol. Thank you, ma'am. And if those authorities drink so hard they need help recalling the basic terms of reality, well, I'm here to help. She bows and smiles. She's an interesting character. I don't know what to make of her, really. What is this in cute encephalop encephalopathy? <laughs> I can't even say the word. It's a neurological disorder caused by a lack of vitamin B in the brain. Symptoms include a retrograde amnesia. It's quite serious. You should get yourself checked out. Probably. She conveys it in short, cold bursts, trying not to invest too deeply in the condition of this doomed detective. Uh huh. In case he goes down later, souring the entire portfolio. Yeah, I don't want to attach too closely to a sinking ship. What causes encephalop encephalopathy? Well, it's either bariatric surgery or long-term alcohol use. It's definitely the drinking. She nods slowly. Yeah. 
Yes, and perform autoerotic asphyxiation on yourself with your funny necktie <laughs> out in the open somewhere. Especially out in the open. I know you got a lot riding on me. I won't let you down. It's not just me, detective. All of Martinez has placed its chips on your success. I pray we've all bet wisely. I don't think you had a choice, but let me ask something You're else. My guest. I want to know who, you, what you are. Hmm. She hums. She won't maneuver her way out of this one. Say nothing. Let her talk. I am the vilest of the vile. A traitor. A devourer of nations and infants. She says with a sudden flash of teeth. I am an ultra. Ah. She raises the corner of her mouth, smirking, revealing <laughs> a canine. Dios mio, a liberal. <laughs> I understand. What's so vile about that? Haven't you heard? I am a nether creature of the Forbidden Swamp. One of those who pushed the king under a shit wagon and betrayed the revolution. Okay. I can see you thought I'd gone extinct. No sane person identifies as an ultra-liberal anymore. Not in broad daylight. You're a centrist at heart. A real moralist. Tell me. Now that I've uncoiled myself, do you find me frightening? In her green eyes, you see a mixture of truth and self-satire. Decades of guilt and pride. I gotta be honest, your political views don't matter to me that much. A fitting punishment. To be forgotten, if not forgiven. Save a prayer for us in our chateaus on Azon and in Stella Maris. She smirks. When the dust settled, the liberals were the only ones left to clean up the mess. By virtue of their survival, they were handed enormous power to shape the future. This was all our last generation managed. She turns a gaze to the Delta, so what would you have done differently? With due respect to our overlords, the eternal caretaker government that keeps Martinez a monument to the efficacy of its artillery. That was a very well constructed line. I would not have relinquished sovereignty to the coalition. Not here in Martinez. And not in the Stella Maris or Delta Beachheads either. If not for my own sake. Aha. Uh -huh. She realizes her small, cold fists are clenched. She loosens them. Huh. Then for my daughters. We had an obligation to defend our sovereignty. We should have burned the whole Isola down rather than let them have it. An interesting take. Dark orange flames reflect in her green eyes. An oil fire on the ocean. So you're a patriot? Yes, I suppose I am. But I wouldn't be a patriot anywhere but here. I mean, yeah. Seditious talk, man. The Tim puts his notes down and gives her a look. You're a smart woman. Perhaps. My intellectual vanity will be my undoing. Her earrings chime as she nods. You have daughters? Yes. Whatever else I am. I'm also a mother. And a wife. Now, shall we return to reality? She closes her eyes and opens them again. What is this? A bird? <laughs> a svenicid? A flightless bird of the polar regions? Keep guessing. Some sort of krill hunter? No, wait. You're an ancient ruin. A symbol of hubris and decay. Half submerged in some salty sea. Are you saying I'm ruined? Of course you're not, my dear. I'm just terrible at guessing games. <laughs> Fair. I mean, what is this place here? Ah. This is the pier of Rue de saint Gislaine, 33A, where the tenants have been kind enough to rent me a slot. Or two. <laughs> what is Rue de saint Gislaine, 33A? A pre-revolutionary tenement. Old buildings are called tenements, you see. And new buildings, batimaux. After Les Bâtiments Nouveaux. But 33A and 33B are not Nouveau. They're old. She looks up at the crumbling facade. This one used to be eight to ten stories tall. A real high rise by the standards of the last century. Built to mirror the skyscrapers across the bay in the Delta. That was before the war, of course. And who lived in them? Mostly the urban middle class, I believe. This was once primo real estate before the cannons lock four or five stories off. Likely not as clean as you make it sound. Splat, splat. 
From a dilap dilapidated balcony, Cindy the Skull gives Joyce the evil eye, her red paintbrush held to her throat. Wonderful. Huh. What is that? The girl in the old lady rags. Yeah. Looks like a sullen and rebellious member of a teen infraculture. Infraculture? Yes. You and I belong to the supraculture. We're common, the herd. The music on the radio, the food in the chain restaurant, those are all too popular for the girl in the old lady rags. So the mainstream versus the alternative, the standard versus the hipster. She prefers a fantasy world, an infraculture with its own dress code and vernacular. It is an illusion, I'm afraid. There is no refuge from the supraculture. All right, now explain the same thing, but to a child. Young people who dye their hair funny colors and wear old people's clothes are stupid, and their little rebellion is self-defeating. Fair point, as someone who used to do that. Kind of still does. I guess I don't dye my hair, but I do wear, like, jackets and stuff. All right. What next? I think that's all for now. Glad to have been of assistance. The little that I know. Anything else? That's all. Thank you. Okay, well, we got a lot of information. This is good. The time is soon coming in which we will have a big confrontation with Measurehead and attempt to um, win this time. I am stronger. My stats are back up to full. The smoker up there could be a witness. Talk to him. What's that noise down there? Hello, sir. You see a young man on a balcony nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Hello, sir. Not looking for any trouble, officer. He says in a quiet voice, despite the cold, his shirt hangs unbuttoned on his frame. <laughs> Too late, young man. Trouble's found you. I just want to know what's going on, man. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie, if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? He asks, adjusting his shirt. Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. Uh-huh. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Can you tell me your name? My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Is that an artist's name? That's definitely not his real name. <laughs> You're not actually called that, are you? No, of course not. Could you please lower your voice? He scans the courtyard. It's silent like the bottom of a well. Every sound captured and reflected back. Ask him again. Listen, I need your name. And I really need to finish this cigarette. He replies with a subtle smile. But he hasn't left yet. Uh-huh. Looks like you got a good view of the whirling's backyard. Did you see anything? I'd even go so far as to say that the view is a little too good, my dear gendarme. Do you have an estimate of when the body will be taken away? I'm working on it. We will remove the body as soon as possible. Now tell us, where were you last Sunday? Last Sunday, where were you? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? No. He's so obviously trying to play with us, it's not funny. Pretty sure I didn't. No, not you. Some more muscular type. Well then, not me. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? The lieutenant takes out his little blue notebook and writes something down. Last week? I don't know. Look. He looks around the courtyard again. Old patio chairs and dead houseplants listed the scene. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? Get him, Kim. <sighs> I had a friend over. What kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. Uh-huh. Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby and drinking beer. That does sound nice. What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply. Gesturing, no, with his cigarette. In the neighboring windows, you can see faint reflections of his silhouette, all from different angles. Okay, we'll talk later. No. We won't. Are you sure about that? He takes one last drag of a cigarette before stubbing it out on the balcony. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. I'm gonna try. Let's try and convince him to stay. Time to bring out your secret charm. Tears and beg him. Show him your emotional <laughs> side. Throw yourself before his very feet like a dog. 
<laughs> what do you want from me? Do you want me to cry, huh? No, for God's sake, I don't want you to cry. <laughs> <laughs> he takes a quick step back and looks around, clearly disturbed. Listen, I really have to go. With a flick of his wrist, he sends the extinguished cigarette over, sailing over the rail. Good luck with the investigation. He walks away. Well, that could have gone better. Kim, what do you think of my negotiation tactics? I w if only I hadn't had that bag equipped, I would have got the extra bonus from having my hands free. We should go after him. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. So we just give up? He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. Yeah. There has to be a way of getting inside the building. Let's go check out the door near the pier again. Once we found the way in, we can ask around for his apartment. Yeah, let's do that. Pry bar. We might need pry bar. What about door? There must be another way into the building. Fucking Christ, I forgot he did that. Jeez, god damn it, Kim. Fucking hell. <laughs> Why do you go omnipotent every time I try and open that door? A sturdy metal door. This could be a way into the apartment building the smoking man vanished into. Probably. I'm gonna unequip my shit. Because more suggestion from having my hands free. A sturdy metal door. This could be a way into the apartment building the smoking man vanished into. Hey, you there? I checked the backyard. We couldn't get in that way. Good. We had enough problems with bums and drunks and thieves loitering in the hallway. You have no business here. Convince her that you're a real policeman. Kim is here and that does help. Kim has confirmed that we are officers. You're well versed in the kind of threatening legalese that implies criminal liability, but in fact has no meaning whatsoever. Time to shine, ma'am. Your non-compliance is hindering a police matter. I may be forced to refer you for potential prosecution. I know my rights, and don't you mom me, boy. The voice snaps back. Miss, would it help if we offer to show you our badges? Um, I don't have mine, Kim, remember? Ah, it's like a carrot to the stick. Sort of. Yeah, kinda. Hold your horses. <laughs> <laughs> you hear the click of a night latch before the lady on the other side gets caught in a coughing spasm. I don't care about your stinking badge. Just come in. Thank you, she manages to say with a wheeze. I'm still not finding any money. I'm, did I, I'm, I'm gonna try and see if Kim will be on board with this. Right. Kim, I don't know how to tell you this, but I really need money. Oh my god, what? The naval coat? Whoa! Yeah! This classic double-breasted coat suits everyone, including you. And if you ever find yourself battling winds at the helm of a ship, then the coat's heavy fabric has got your back, even if moths have left a few holes in it. Oh, yeah. Time to walk in and impress everybody. Hello, ma'am. I'm very impressive, I know. Graffito says a firing squad for the rich. Here, here. Give me a moment. An elderly woman is leaning on her broom, her knuckles white as bone. She seems to be having difficulty breathing. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> I'm not going to ask if she wants to see my badge because I don't have it. Are you alright? Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> she starts coughing, red spots appearing on her cheeks. You're still worried. It's very worrying. It is worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? I'm looking for a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build, smoker on the balcony. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? She looks at the other end of the hallway. Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. Uh-huh. What's he in trouble for? No trouble. I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk? <laughs> the cleaning lady starts laughing, but it turns into a violent coughing spasm. She squeezes a broom, trying to catch her breath. What was so funny about that? 
What indeed? He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. He's home right now, from what I can tell. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Indeed. Who are you? I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. That does qualify as someone. You are someone. Do you live here? If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. She spits on the floor before wiping it off with a broom. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. She jumps out her chin, eyes shining. She hasn't spoken to anyone for a while. Even her sentences feel rusty. This is going to take a while. I have a few questions. Ask away, policeman. What can you tell me about Cindy? The artiste. Nothing I can do about her, I'm afraid. She ruins the walls faster than I can clean them. Still... She leans on a broom. She leaves an old lady to her business. More than I can say for others. I'm sure. That's she all. She mumbles some kind of a response. Then hacks something into her handkerchief. That's all. I'm off. Thanks. There's a balcony there. The note reads, foreclosed by Martinet Realty Associates. Doesn't appear to be anything in here, which is surprising. I thought there'd be things to steal. Sea looks cold and winter grey. Someone has torn down the wall. A fridge. <gasps> no so fed and money. I'm slightly close to being able to afford a place to stay tonight. Grocery list and checks. This is all well and good, but I'm still... Poor, and I really do need to get on that, actually, because um, if I run out of money, I can't imagine sleeping in the rough does me any favors. Hey, Cindy. How's it going? Ooh, the piggies have learned how to saunter up staircases. I didn't think you could do that with hooves, but here you are. That's right, we've evolved. We have thumbs now. Yeah, I can see that. Cool mutations. She crosses her arms. Thanks, do you like my new coat? That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. He says, studying the contents of Cindy's bucket. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. Probably mine. She really did it. She's proud of it, too. Hey, fumes are bad for you. Something to think about next time you're driving around in your pretty little piggy carriage. Indeed. See you later. Stuff up here. Come on, money. Yes, a lot of money. Above tops, flap in the wind. Forgotten hammers and ra ra nails rust. What about this door? Door's locked. You can't get in. Excuse me? Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Dual wielding tools? Are you sure I can't get in? Are you sure? Apparently the game is pretty sure, yes. The game is almost certain I can't get in. Okay, never mind. We've almost realized that, just 20 minutes left. We're doing well. I hope we get some decent bonuses for that one. But considering we'll be bringing ourselves back into understanding the world, it does seem pretty valuable. This is the coal room. Someone's been sleeping here and recently. Yes, the old lady. Enough coal to last several winters. Smells of chemicals. That's probably why she's coughing all the time. Pull-on laborer jeans. Ooh. I like jeans. God ass. <laughs> Versus a lack of savoir faire, but more electrochemistry. I'm not particularly worried about savoir faire, and I'm more interested in keeping reaction speed. Although my thoughts do counteract that reaction speed penalty. So I could just get more savoir faire. What else is getting rid of savoir faire? That. But one of our thoughts is already lowering savoir No, because we, real we finished. Yeah, we finished it. So the savoir faire fair thing's off. 
What is this? Apartment 8, their mailbox is overflowing. There's a box through there. I'm gonna re-equip my bag so I can pick up tear. Which occurs to me that might be quite important. It's like I said, I desperately need money. And if my hands are full anyway, then... May as well equip that. What is this? Money! Good. What is this? Money! Good. Oh, we're halfway there. We're more than halfway towards getting a room for the night. What's this? Postcard, Boogie Street 46. Ah. Door 9 is locked. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. Please answer the door. You can feel tension on the other side. Knock again. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Pretty sure that was the wrong line, but okay. This time the steps come closer. Who is this? Demands a female voice. Very intense. There's the police. Open up. Do I have to open the door? You hear the clacking of heels again as the other side walks right up to the door. Her tone is now getting a defensive edge. Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. I don't think I have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. Let's go. Fine. You win this time. Hello, are those new shoes? No, it's one penny in a shoe. Good, I have more money now. Okay, that was worthwhile. Someone's drawn a five-pointed star on the wall. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk-drawn number on the board says number 11. Hmm, let's knock. No reply. Examine the padlock. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. I, I, it almost feels pointless that the... I mean, actually, I know why it does this. It does this because it wants you to know that there are uh, skill checks you can make with tools. But it is pretty funny that if you don't have it equipped, you literally just have, like, a almost impossible chance of doing it. Okay, let's equip the fucking thing then. Let's equip the fucking thing then. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, oh, uh, let's do it. All right, let's this door has let's been break and enter. The padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says, oh. "What are you doing? You're trying to cut the body of the lock with the chain cutters, and it's really not working." Who the fuck would try and cut the body? Come on, man, that's not an interfacing issue. That's just being stupid. I believe it's the shackle you mean to cut, detective. You're correct. God damn it. Well, he'll won. He's just trying to help. Don't take it. Bad. Relax. These chain cutters are broken, Kim. Perhaps you should give it another go. Kim pointed out the shackle. <laughs> this is humiliating. The shackle there we go. snaps like a twig, and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. Kim, I did it. I shouldn't have needed his help at all, to be After honest. You, detective. Thanks, Kim. I can't believe you're approving of this because we're just wandering into a random place, but... Ah. A flamboyant poster of a white star. Real lithography. Good. Boosts books of critical theory on the monstrosities of capital and such. Photos of revolutionaries posing with guns. Seems like a real revolutionary was here. Seems like it. Ah, uh, hello. What's in here? Ooh. A 9mm bullet. Interesting. And a Sarah Mir Mirizian lounge jacket. How do I look with the lounge jacket? It provides plus one to conceptualization versus that. Not bad, not bad. It's a decent look. But I like my big blue coat. I look like sea captain. All I need is a nice sea captain's hat. Revolutionaries love to pose with their guns. It's true. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Marzov. We've heard of this guy. Honestly, he does kind of look like you after all. <laughs> he kind of looks like me. Uh, Kim, you have to admit, this Kras Mazov bears a striking resemblance to me. Hold on a second. Is this why you broke in here? To find out whether you're Kras Mazov? 
No, it's purely coincidental. I have to consider and investigate all possibilities. Except that Krasmazov is dead. He's been dead for 50 years now. But just, just, just humor me for a moment. Don't you see the resemblance? Well, you both do seem to share an affinity for sideburns. But it seems like old Kras here didn't drink nearly as much as you. <laughs> Maybe this boss shows him before he started drinking. Ah, very well. <laughs> Let's look for identifying features then. Yeah. Doesn't he have a birthmark right here? What about you? I can't tell. I can't see my own face. All right. But here's the big thing. Krasmasov looks Samaran, and you don't. I... Uh, no, he, I am part Samaran myself. Okay, you win. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> he half-heartedly attempted to humor me. He was like, fuck it, whatever. Just do what you want. Whatever. Why are you so hell-bent on proving that you're Krasmazov anyway? Because he was totally a gangster and a bank robber who went for all the cash in the world. That's me. I'm not sure. It's just a feeling I have, but I trust my feelings. All right, Kras, if you say so. <laughs> so why do they have this anyway? The white star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communal. How fitting. He looks around before mumbling to himself. Leave. So I could decide that I'm Krasmazov. There's something you can't get out of your head. Krasmazov, the father of scientific communism, the premier of the Communist Party of Chest and Grad during the ant anticentennial revolution, head of the 11-day government, cyber doting bearded figurehead of the movement, shot himself in the mouth and died one day in his cabinet as things were collapsing around him. Just gave up? That's not good propaganda, is it? Be a communist. Shoot yourself in the mouth. Something about this irks you. I mean, this isn't actually something saying I should be him. It's just an investigation or a thought process. I'm not necessarily saying I want to go for it, but it's interesting. We don't really have the um, thought spaces for it now anyway, but something to consider. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers, the iconography of communism, in other words. Interesting. Let's have a look. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Okay. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment and fear in equal measure. So why is it upside down? To symbolize the toppling of the old order. Right. Also, some social democrats were already using it. Yeah, that'll do it. So what's the deal with the antlers? The wreath of antlers represents a natural crown. It was about building a society that could exist in accord with the natural world and at the same time above it. And why white? Because white is the color of peace. Ah, so what does it evoke in me? Nothing at all yet. Right now, it's just meaningless shapes on a wall. Imagine I'd have to finish a certain thought before that would make more sense to me. Like, say, the suicide of Krasmazov. This place is full of stuff. Box is filled with cleaning chemicals. Smells of laundry detergent. Flip up glasses, the auditor. Ooh. Glasses, you say? These flip-up sunglasses were fashionable in the old, but have since lost their popularity. Their thin gold alloy wire frames are a reminder of drug-addled bohemian artists. These days, glasses are only favored by cri organized crime accountants who desire to look cool. Yes, yes, good, yes. I look like Dr. Eggman. Holy shit, I really look like Dr. Eggman. My authority is taking a massive hit. So if I remove that, then suddenly it's not so bad. The shower curtains are covered in some sort of slime. I could still probably use a shower, though. Uh, my character smells a bit. Money. Good. I realized I was holding down caps lock instead of tab, which was pretty funny. Alcohol, alcohol, Commodore Red. Increases physique, but lowers morale. That could be useful for dealing with measure head, potentially. Just give ourselves a nip of a nip of booze before um, having a go, and that would heal the the morale I lose. I did find alcohol. I gotta say, I'm liking the look of our character right now, he looks very cool, and also doesn't. 
but you know, it's fine. It's full of cigarette butts and electric wires. Money? We're getting there. Bit by bit. Something over there. I can't get in. Just a door. Nothing here for you right now. Someone's growing rosemary, thyme, and a cactus. I suspect this is our friend's door. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Uh-huh. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Good. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. Knock. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. Seems that way. Okay. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Tomorrow, 9 p.m. Got it. Tomorrow, 9 p.m. Right here. Apartment number 28. Good. Let's go. All right, we've got two things for tomorrow. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry, you'll get him. We'll need to get the numbers from the, um... Remember, tomorrow, he's probably gone for today. Okay. Uh, yeah, we need to check in on the radio tomorrow. Complete silence, whoever lives here isn't home. We need to check in on the radio, and then at 9 p.m. we need to come back here. Voices from within, singing along to some buoyant dance track. I dare say. Well, I think we've exhausted the um, apartment buildings for now. There was a lot here. I'm significantly richer than when I started, which is surprising. Money. Lots of money. We're so close to being able to pay for our room again. Once we've gotten that taken care of, I can engage with the rest of the day more peacefully, knowing I'm not screwed. Hey, guys. How's it going? Have you no shame? Whining about your back every time you bring out the measuring tape. The man says to his partner. Rene, you're a man with a fork in a world of soup. Please, let's just try to enjoy the game, all right? The other one is eating a big sandwich. I'm trying to, but you keep breaking my concentration. You're old. I can see that. We're both old. <laughs> now stop grabbing your ass like it's a girl. I love his coat. These manly men are playing balls. This is a ball game. <laughs> Grab a ball and play it. Don't ask questions. Shoot first. Ask questions never. This appears to be balls, but I'm actually going to ask what it is. No, you got this. There's the ball. You're the game. Oh, acting without hesitation increases the chance. Show them how it's done. Yes. Take this, lads. Get ready to see some pro work. Oh. You are immediately surprised by the ball's lack of weight. No matter. You'll make it work. Feel the ball. The cold metal ball is surprisingly smooth against your neck. It has a pattern on it. Probably a sponsored ball. Yours would only be covered with bumps of learning and scars of victory. Just like me. Already, your muscles are adjusting to the weight, the nervous system calibrating, until you and the ball have merged into a single entity. The man ball is ready. The man ball, take in the surroundings. A chilly breeze ruffles your hair as you stand there, feet firmly planted. All sounds, smells, even the wind, Everything fades until the only thing left is the union of man and ball. Excellent. There is time for a glass glance inward. Who am I? An embodiment of pure motion. A fine-tuned locomotor running at maximum efficiency. Maximum efficiency. Behold the fear and confusion reflecting in the eyes of the two feeble geezers. They are in awe of your superiority. You are a god to them. I am a god. Some would still say you're a cop, but I guess we're beyond that now. We're beyond that now. The inertia can be contained no more than a bullet leaving a gun. Let go. Be the bullet.
I'm not sure if that's how the game is supposed to be played. It's <laughs> not the game! <laughs> you just shot put into the fucking ocean. <laughs> that's not... That's not what they were doing. A whole house of shit. <laughs> Apparently. What the hell is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> not a weak right tricep, that's for sure. I don't care if you are a cop. You do not just ruin someone's game. It's so goddamn disrespectful. I'm sensing anger and I don't understand why. You vandalized our game, son. We can't play Petonk with five bull. P-Tank? Yes, Petonk. <laughs> you ruined our Petonk game. <laughs> we want our bull back. Oh. <laughs> Take it easy, René. This is just a misunderstanding, isn't it, officer? No harm done. It was a, it was a mistake. Of course there's arm done, you oil slug. You are as a goddamn bull. The heel of his cavalry boot slams in the ground. All right, I will try to fix this. Good. Mistakes are forgiven when men at least try to right their wrongs. I believe you will try. Now, why did you approach us? That's kind of you. It's very kind of you, actually. Yes. Why did you come? <laughs> it's unlikely they know anything about the murder. <laughs> Why the fuck did I wander over here? <laughs> Just talk. It'll smooth things over. Old people like attention. Maybe. Thank you for your time. I'm going to, uh, hang on. Yeah, we'll do this first. Jamais vu. Derealization. Here we go. Jamais vu. The opposite of deja vu. Oh. Not already seen, but never seen everything that should be familiar appears strange and new like some half forgotten day in your childhood only now that's the feeling you've been having and for who knows how long you should go and ask joyce messier about this what world are we in this is a fundamental question yes we should do that plus one xp for every orb clicked Ooh. All intellect learning caps raised by one. I see why that's such an important one. I want to get rid of these so I could talk properly. That doesn't create. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that anyway. You got one bullet. That's good. Uh. Yeah, hello. We are still waiting for a replacement for the bull you sent sinking. It was a good shot, wasn't it? Do you know anything about the man hanged in the back of the whirling in rags? Unfortunately, I don't. Unlike most of the locals, I have no qualms about assisting law enforcement. But this affair has passed me by completely. He shrugs. And most of the locals? In Martinez. The union is the law. So can you really blame them? But you don't have a problem with cops? Cop is a pejorative term. I don't have a problem with policemen. On the contrary, I admire the effort to bring order to our streets. He doesn't know about the crime. Your time is better spent discussing politics. Politics. So what about police women? I'm confident they are indispensable in regard to all the paperwork and other administrative duties. There are no duties RCM women can carry out. I was curious to see what he was going to respond with. But you must agree that nature, in her infinite wisdom, has made men more fit to perform certain more challenging tasks, don't you, officer? No, I don't think there's any evolutionary equality at play here. Really, officer? <laughs> Match an average woman against an average man in a dark alley and see who comes out on top. Jesus Christ. Gender equality is a very noble, very modern idea. But in real life, primal roles prevail. But I do not wish to discuss this matter further. That's cool, neither do I. You seem to be flying in a crater. Yes. The terrain here provides an interesting variety to a familiar game. Does it have anything to do with all the bullet holes I've been seeing around? Yes. It was left by heavy artillery fire. He replies with a reluctant nod. Heavy artillery fire, you say? That's the best kind of artillery fire. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. Watch this crater left by artillery fire, but why? Why what? Why was heavy artillery used? Because that's what happens when communists hijack your country. Execute your supreme leadership and turn your capital into a slaughterhouse. 
You use heavy ordnance to clean up your home. Who are the communards again? Commies, communists, socialists, anarchists, call them what you like. They just chose the name to feel special. Senseless sentimentality. Did you use artillery fire against them? Sadly, no. It was the foreigners who brought them to their knees. We fought valiantly. Too valiantly. So valiantly we got licked. He adds, squeezing a bull in his fist. Should have fought dirty, like they did with their suicide sex cult propaganda and mad anarchist women strapped <laughs> to shrapnel bombs. We didn't so, and we lacked caliber. God bless him, but the suzerain's cannon simply weren't big enough. Why shell them here in Martinet? Because this place is a damn beachhead. Had to soften the commies up first. The beachhead? Yes. The military coordinated amphibious landing to take back Revachel. He inspects you with some disdain. He finds your lack of historic knowledge troubling. A sign of mental deterioration in the preceding generations. No, I'm just drunk. Martinez was used as one of the three footholds in Revachel during Operation Deathblow in 08. The other two are off in Stella Maris and the Delta. He points to the northeast. Deathblow sounds grim. This here is blood ground, where coalition boots first made landfall and cleaned those rabbit dogs out. Most likely, we're playing petonk on their mangled corpses. Probably. Blood ground. You got old René going there. Like he isn't hungry enough already. That explains all the war damage. Damn right, son. They laid the fire of hell on this city before they stormed it. And it worked, too. Yeah, pre-invasion bombardment is fairly standard. The rest of the city got cleaned up, but Martinez they keep as a monument. And now the Union Socialists are practically running the place. Uh-huh. Well, it's your own damn fault. You, we, the Coalition, Revachol, whoever you want to blame, never finished the job. Officially, the party never surrendered. Of course they still all influence. Yeah. You don't even begin to truly understand the players on the table, let alone the specific circumstances surrounding them. <laughs> what do you think? He stops mid-sentence and turns to you. Thinking men have opinions on these things. Present one. Ah. I don't think I just do. Seem quite capable. They are not. <laughs> and I'm sorry it had to be them. After eight years of fighting those hyenas, boiling cats for food and drinking piss in the mountains. He takes a deep breath. I would have preferred if the right honorable King Guillaume returned to Revachal. Or even if that damn clan Frisell had risen from the grave and led us. Sadly, that was not the case. Evidently. This royal failure weighs heavily on him. Mm hmm. Instead, all that is just, holy, and beautiful in the world was wiped away, and now it's neon signs with toothpaste ads everywhere. Foreign influence peddling garbage and stupid music on the radio. He sighs. What's what? You don't like toothpaste? This is just what the commies wanted. This was their plan all along. This is what they wanted to replace the role of the suzerain with. He was, who was Frissel? Damn Frissel. He was a king we couldn't protect. The carabineers failed him, and the crown. He died in the hands of the Hyperlay, in a very public execution. How very French. He slouches as he says that. It makes him smaller, admitting they left the king to the mob. You mentioned Guillaume? A true king in both blood and mind, led Revachal before Frisell. He would have been better, but the damn commies drove him into exile. Downer. Wait. Joyce said William ran, and his nephew, Frizzle, was shot in his place. Commies didn't drive Guillaume out, he left and then when, when things got bad and left Frizzle to take the hit. This is communist propaganda. <sighs> Guillaume would never do something like that. He is Lelion. I don't think he is. There is not a shadow of doubt in his mind that this is the truth. Ah, uh, so what exactly is the suzerain? The suzerain is the king. Has everyone forgotten already? They've forgotten already. He then slowly nods and says to himself, It's no use talking to you. You were still in daddy's balls when it happened. When we took our last stand against the fifth, 
and rode the cavalry straight into gunfire. I saw the statue of Philip III. Ah, yes. King Philip III on his steed. A reminder of what Revachal once was. Ah. Oh, absolutely. At the mercy of a cocaine-snorting tyrant who emptied the treasury so he could sleep on a bed of gold. I like you, Gaston. A superpower, feared and respected. A testament to what this country can be under the leadership of a true king. Someone who knows how to rule. So how should a true king rule? Decisively, without fear of offending the sensibilities of the frail and weak-minded among his subjects. This is something the insurgents never understood. I mean, it seems to me a leader should take care of his people before himself. A nation is only as strong as its leader. That's why it was such madness to try to... Don't get started on that again. <laughs> what happened, happened. There is some weariness in his voice now. He's heard this rant many times before. The carabineer doesn't reply, but his entire being communicates unbreakable resolve. No one and nothing can change this man's mind. He is as rigid as they come, still in that antique uniform. It's a symbol for him. He's stuck in the past. So what was that about cocaine? Oh, old Philip was a big fan of the purple nose candy the nobility loved so much. A cocaine connoisseur of sorts. Ah, his egocentricity is borderline legendary. Legendary. You can't even take the responsibility for yourself. How could you fathom the responsibility weighing on the shoulders of a ruler? He asks, obviously annoyed. That's why the Philippian kings use cocaine, for clarity of vision, to aid in their work. Regnum cocainum, Revachal's finest years. He seems to grow taller, brimming with pride about the past. Imagine being proud of your leaders for taking cocaine. Of course. Clarity of vision. Awareness. Lieutenant Mark Dryly. Philip III was even brought into this world with the help of cocaine. The court medic administered the dose to his mother when she was in labor. Jesus Christ. It is well known that with the help of cocaine, only the purest, of course, he was oh, yeah. able to connect with higher realms. Only pure cocaine administered while in labor. Yeah, totally. Higher realms. Of course, it all makes sense. Does it? He's just making excuses for the king's habits, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like irresponsible behavior for a monarch, considering they shouldn't even operate heavy machinery. From what I've seen of the officers of the LCM... Ah. Uh, uh, but I don't want to get into a debate about drug policies. Yeah, let's talk about right. something else. Thank you for your time. Hey. Psst. Who, me? Yes, you. Word on the street is, you're ready to start building communism again. How come there's word on the street? You keep saying things like, down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, uh, and compel all people who have more than 25 real in their pockets. Literally murder all human beings, regardless of their political beliefs. That kind of stuff. I said down with I've I said down with the bourgeoisie and eat the rich, but I didn't say the things after that. I've, s I've said some mildly left wing things, but none of those. Oh yes, the mass of ambivalence. Don't deny it. You're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven eyed lamb of global communism that would devour and masticate mankind. Uh huh. Everyone can see that. So tell me. Do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? Um... Info. No, I wanted to see my- I wanted to see my record. Where can I check my stats? Yeah. I- I guess I am pretty communist, aren't I? Very not fascist. We can dabble in communism, why not? Let's roll up our sleeves and start building communism. Oh yeah. Get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. What? Fi you didn't say anything about firing squads. Too late to back out now. You can't make an omelette without breaking a few million eggs. Ah, well, I guess you're right. Breathe in the pristine air. Yeah, we could, we could opt into communism. I'm not sure I will, though. 
Uh, yeah, okay, alright, well, yeah, cool. Let's see if we can go get their ball back. I don't know how the fuck we're gonna do that. I assume we'd have to buy a new one. Yeah, I don't see the ball. The sight of bullet holes stirs something in you, making you forget the lieutenant's surname. Yeah, Kim, look, bullet holes. Where? Ships in the wall. Someone has been shot. We're cops. We should solve it. There? Those are old. Oh, you mean like from the revolution? Yes, the one that happened half a century ago. Those bullets were fired during the revolution and <laughs> warrant an investigation by officers of civil law. No, we have to go back and check it out. What can you tell me? Not much. I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Shall we go? Okay. <laughs> Kim, look! Bullet holes! He's like, yes. Very good. They're fucking everywhere. We should talk to Joyce again. Just to finish off that whole realization thing. So I imagine we'll get a lot of experience for um, finishing that train of thought. There is one, still that one big thing I want to attempt today. And I am going to. But I'm also going to try and make this video shorter, I guess. I said that last time and it didn't work out, but who knows? Maybe I'll do it this time. Back. Good. What can I help you with? More, More questions. questions. In basic reality. My favorite part of the day. Go ahead. Ask me anything. Let's do this. Conceptualize. What is all of this? The scent. The sound. The air. What world is this? What world? The only one, I suppose. The world of matter. And its pale antipode. Uh huh. The camera of her mind glides over the surface of the water. Let us speak. Great bodies of water, forest-covered surfaces, clusters of light where the cities lie. You've seen the montage. We all have. This world is enough. Uh-huh. There is a term of endearment they coined for it in the DeLorean century, when humanity was high on this world, discovering more and more of it, these archipelagos included. What was that? Elysium. Elysium. We've just heard that phrase. The world needs a term of endearment. It does. There are those who would call it hell. And what is hell? A term of hatred that originates, like many such things, with the Mesk Petro fascists. I don't feel like I've got the whole picture yet. Oh, you want a picture of the world? There is no complete set yet, dear. They're having some trouble reaching orbit. She raises her finger to her lips. How come? Great things are difficult to achieve. For now, we're viewing the world from the inside. Sideways. Inside sideways? What shape is this world, then? We used to think it was a sphere. But that is beginning to look less and less likely by the day. You wouldn't know it from the tabloids. But the ORG nations have been launching weather balloons into the lower ionosphere since the 30s. Okay. O-R-G. Occident Revachol Grad. Ah. There's a steadily increasing trickle of images. Between the big three scientific contributors, they're piecing together a dark grey corona. So this is not even Earth, really. A dark grey corona? Yes. Pale covers 72% of the surface. There are grey flares and prominences, even arcs above entire isolas. The images are blurry, but if there was a sphere in there, it certainly looks like it fractured a long time ago. So what, wait, are you saying this, the planet has fractured? You seem to be spooked. Please don't be. <laughs> Her voice becomes homely, calm. She lets a moment pass. The pale? What do you mean by corona? <laughs> they say there is a rarefied envelope of matter surrounding the darkened disk of our planet. That is, if we are still living on a planet. Or, to speak more plainly, imagine vast swathes of land disrupted by nothingness. Okay. I am sorry, dear. It must sound quite terrifying through the acute encephalopathy. Even scientific positivism isn't entirely convinced about what we're dealing with here. But this is one of the greatest questions of our time. Maybe when they get the complete set together, it will jolt us out of our rut, bring us together, however naive it may sound. Well, symbolically, I don't think a fractured corona is going to bring anyone together. You have misimagined it. 
I don't have the power to convey to you the effect and geometry of the images that depict our world from below low orbit. It's... It's... It's like the crowning of the world. It's insane. Very disco. You'd love it. Well, if you say it's disco... See? Everyone finds something worth holding on to in this world. However wasted its opportunities. Suddenly, you're conscious of yourself standing there, on whatever this all is. Your arms hang down by your sides. Oh. The lieutenant observes you both, silently. He adjusts his glasses. He said pale. What is pale? The pale is not, technically speaking, part of reality. The fuck does that mean? Yes. Also, I think we've had enough excitement for today. Remember, we have a cadaver to attend to. Ah. Of course, Lieutenant. Let's try something else. What do you mean it's not part of reality? Ma'am, remember you are dealing with a very sensitive <laughs> and questionable police officer who is still recovering from a recent medical episode. He's a very brave boy. <laughs> the Lieutenant's right. Let's change topics. What do you want to know? Anything. She gives you a little wink. But she wants to tell you. Uh-huh. This is not going to happen with the lieutenant present, unless you can convince him to step aside. <laughs> Ask for Kim to step away while you discuss the pale. Is what you want to oh. do. But should you? He expressly stated you shouldn't hear about it. What if it renders you mad? Or catatonic? Or makes you lose your memory again? Oh boy. Yes? Uh, well, I'll be back later, I suppose. Glad to have been of assistant. Okay. Well, we'll just have to come back here without Kim. That's all there is to it. Well, we are discovering many things today. It's going well. It's unfortunate that I got a Charme Vu, just as I'm pretty sure I've clicked on every single orb I could find in the immediate area and will now not gain any experience bonuses from it, but hey, it's something. Oh, orbs. Enormous balls worthy of a real man. Ryan Street Sign says fuck the police. He wants to know if we've got a minute. It's just as well. I actually wanted to talk to him. What's up, I, buddy? Uh, saw you poking around in Lady Driver's lorry. She in trouble? There's going to be an investigation. It's that bad. Man, what should I do? What should I do to help her? He lets out a whistle, suddenly looking about 10 years older. There's no need you don't have to do anything. We're, do we're handling it. Yeah, maybe I should just keep my head down and work on my rhymes while I can. Yeah, what's the plan with those rhymes anyway? Oh, you know. Tommy Leham's gonna be a musician. Shrek song, but with beats. I've got a lot of free time on the road to hone my craft. Yeah. The correct grammar is Tommy Leham. Leham? Why Tommy Leham? Tommy Lom was taken. Ah. Uh. My real name's Jerry Lafitte. Tommy's way better. It does. It has the right vibe to it. It's more him. It's more him. I had another question. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. I wonder. I saw for now by. I think the uh, the the clipboard provides empathy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Well, let's give that a try. Now it's turning into a kind of a snow limbo, man. What's on your mind? Let's try this. In his eyes? Yeah. Our familiar longing. Flecks of brown and gold. Familiar how? It's hard to say. His gaze wanders southwest. Down the street that goes beyond the horizon. So what's in the southwest? Excuse me? He emerges from the reverie. A flinch jolts his frame. The question has touched a nerve. Really? You, you can tell me. Man. I don't know what to say. Not much anyone can do. There's no helping in absence, you know? It's true. I miss my family. They're all I have. My wife, second kid on the way, waiting all the way in Diora. And here I am stuck in this shit, so far from home. Rough, what's Diora? Diora of the Seven Seas. It's on the other end of La Caillou, pretty much. On another island called Laurentide, off mainland. We've got a little place there. I can almost hear my kid laugh when it snows. What's it like to miss someone? What's it like? <laughs> Good. 
and bad, an ache that brings you joy. I think of them a lot. I dream up these silly scenarios in great detail of living with them. It comforts me. <sighs> what about you, cop man? You missing someone? He turns his eyes to you. Is that what it is? This feeling? I miss my gun. I don't miss anyone. I miss someone, but I don't know who it is. I feel for you, my friend. It's bad enough to know who you miss. Missing like that doesn't feel like it has much of an upside. Can't imagine it does. But, thanks for this. It's nice to talk to someone. And I know it wasn't easy to ask. I hope you find your way through your own troubles. Thanks, Tommy. Now I'm gonna hit you with some real shit. Your best oh. verse. <laughs> you don't even have a bad <laughs> verse in here. Just tumbleweed and liquor stains. Wait, no. What are you doing? <laughs> she broke me. She fucking broke me. That's brutal, man. <laughs> but you know, time will... <laughs> no, stop. He's already mortified. No, Tommy, these are my rhymes. Listen. <laughs> That's, um... Oh. In the name of God, what are you doing? <laughs> In the name of God. It's not real, guys. It's not actual thoughts. It's a poem. Yeah, yeah, I get that, and it's cool, but... I will never be the same again. <laughs> She's always there. Fuck the case. Fuck everything. Total doom. It doesn't even rhyme. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I get it. These are your rhymes. They're from yeah. your life. Yeah. Doesn't matter if they're robust. They're honest. Yeah. So... <laughs> Thanks, man. They're my rhymes. Yes, and I also thank you for stopping. <laughs> <laughs> we have a murder investigation to return to. How about we do that? That couldn't have gone worse. Do you have some... Can you spare some change? Huh? <laughs> oh. No, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. They who? The bosses, man. That sounds like a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me. Or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down in his luck. If I had saved four myself. Understandable. That's all for now. Goodbye. <laughs> Our rhymes are impeccable, I tell you. I don't get I don't even know what his problem is. Close for winter, use the main entrance. You can fuck off. There are three T's, how idiomatic. I wanna check fr Oh god. I wanna check Fricks. They might have cigarettes. Which we could give to um uh Kuno. And he might be able to help us. Stands in your bottles clunk into the machine. Money. How much do these cost? Is the question. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the San Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. So this is medicine. Um, just ask me if you need anything from Saint Baptiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nosafed, Duramine, Magnesium, and Hypnogamma. So healing items. What do they do? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Nosafed is a nasal spray. Dramine is a really good painkiller. Magnesium is a dietary supplement. Hypnogamma is... She stops. I don't really know what Hypnogamma is. I guess it makes you feel less shit. It's recommended to use after lots of partying, studying or exercising. Can you be more specific? Um, no. Sorry. I'm not like a doctor or anything. Maybe you should be. Nosafed heals <laughs> plus one health. Dramine heals plus three health. Magnesium heals plus one morale. Hypnogamma heals plus three morale. The fact that we can get healing item healing items for 90 cents is pretty good, it must be said. Who is Saint Baptiste? Saint Baptiste. You know, the pharmaceuticals company. No. Saint Baptiste Pharmaceuticals. The one that sells meds out of Saint Baptiste. That one. There. You'll have to be more specific. Thank you. Kind of. Oh, she might sell cigarettes, actually. That looks like cigarettes. A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain. The great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love. Alcohol. <laughs> this is not a good place for a recovering addict. Um, guess not. No. Yeah, that's true. It's not your fault. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health, but 
I guess you already know that. It's true. Don't ask. Don't look. Don't do anything here. Just go away. Get back to work. That's drink. That's drink. Yeah, and that's cigarettes. It's risky because we don't have a lot of money, but give me the cigarettes. Here you go, mister. Thank you. And we'll go give those to Kuno, because I have no qualms about making his life worse, because screw that guy. But he might have information we need. I suspect we might need empathy, but I don't know. Authority doesn't do nothing against the Kuno. Hey, buddy, how's it going? I got something for you. Have you come to make your offering to Kuno? Drip some tar, Kuno. Put it away. The information here isn't worth it. It is. Back off, fuck eyes. Kuno is a man. Kuno can smoke if he wants. He can smoke if he wants. The lieutenant doesn't like this. It may be less destructive to your working relationship to just come back alone later. Ah. Ah. Fine. Fuck you too, Piggo. Fuck you and your fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> fine, I'll cut. That's another thing to do when Kim's not here. All right, fine. Fine. What's up? Right to work. Right to work. Shame on you. Are you a mercenary? Hell no. I'm just an honest scab. I won't have talk like that around here. You understand? Is there a tribunal being convened by any chance? Fucking fuck. <laughs> He breathes out slowly, his giant chest deflating and his mouth slightly open. I'm going to interpret that as a yes. There's a tribunal, and it won't be long until it's ready. Uh-huh. How about you fuck off now, huh? Hmm? Okay, of course. The lieutenant says, his voice is soothing calm, he looks at you. There could be weapons aiming at us right now. Somewhere above, in the buildings. The other merc. Don't push this. He's thinking, this is not the time. Okay. The man's breathing steadies, but his eyes are still narrow. Slowly, he's trying to get his right to work dance back on. I'm gonna say that trying to um, get him to decipher the tattoos right now is not a good idea. Okay. What's this? It says Gri. The Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor, indeed. All right, well, we've got a confrontation to do. We've got a big confrontation. I'm ready, I think. Probably. We'll see. You say no man matches measure head? Well, I've made a few preparations. But how do I use it? <laughs> how do I use it? I've been told it can be used mid-conversation. Well... Someone seems to have found himself a bottle of alcohol. Here's where the magic happens. I'll look at it. Light reflects off the green glass of the Commodore Red. The gods have been generous. Better pop it open before they change their minds. Uh-huh. Wow. The gods of mass production have made this alcohol container laughably easy to open. A child could have done it. There's a satisfying pop as the cork jumps out, and the hair on your back rises like an army at attention. You've been here before. Welcome back, detective. You're home now. Nah, we're not having this thought. Fine. We're not worried. Yes, it's merciful that way. It's not all of us. <laughs> You've passed up your chance to start drinking alcohol for now. Does that mean I can't use it to deal with this guy? The unpromising race pupil returns. Let's give it a try. Fuck. That's not good. Oh no. It has happened again. Another fit of criminal rage. Who are you? In your own words. Yeah, yeah, degenerate alcoholic. Good. Now go before you enter cardiac arrest. Ah, fucker. Please, stop doing this. You are making us look bad. 
No. In two hours, I'll be able to drink the booze. And I'll be able to try again. And that time, we'll get it. We will. We will get it. I will do it. I will defeat him. I can. I know how. Next time, I just have to give in to the impulses and drink the alcohol. I don't have to internalize the alcoholic thought. I just gotta drink it. And then we'll be strong enough to win. In two hours. So one o'clock. So next episode, I suppose. <laughs> oh. I will get it done. All right, well, that's all I've got time for, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. Um, next time, I guess just kill time until we can take another swing at measure head. We'll talk to these guys. We can talk to the other old man. We can probably talk to Annette's mom or something. There's things to do. There are leads to follow up. But I reckon if I take a swig of that of that of that booze, I can take down measure head. I can do it. I think I can. Another plus one will probably bring us above 60% chance, and then surely we'll get it, unless we don't. At which point, I might have to become a racist, which I don't want to do, but we're running out of options, and I've maxed out physical instrument based on my physique. So, yeah. 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 Another one will bring that up to six, which would help. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Special thanks to Beep, Adash Sanjeev, Alkir, Honeydew Corporation, Sweet Baby Red, MB Alias, Lord Skullington, Jessica Kitty, Plutonium Pie, Dreamer Ghost, Leper Lullaby, K-Bub, Magic Cow, The Frostbite, Monsoon, The World, Jumping With Joy, Warmaster Oku, scp 106A, Naymat, and Kenny TA Hunter for supporting me on Patreon. Thank you so much, guys, and thank you all so much for watching. We've learned a lot today. It's been a lot of learning. Not necessarily stuff prevalent to the case, but learning. Learning has been achieved. We've done things. I just like learning in this game. Generally finding things out. Generally talking to people. It's fun. Genuinely like it. I really want to punch out uh, Measurehead, and I know we can. I just need the booze. That's it. I'll have to dance with the devil once more to do what I need to do. And in exchange, we will not have to dance with the significantly more less wholesome, less, less wholesome devil. So it'll all be fine. Whoever happens next time, and we will knock him out, I swear. And when we do, I hope I see you there. Doodles. Goodbye. <laughs>